We're going to open with this uh, prime piece of news real oh, estate. That's a good one here. I love this. Florida man arrested for battering a police officer with a hot dog. <laughs> Uh, read what ap- actually happened. <laughs> so a New York, Newport Ritchie resident, Jason Stoll, had obtained a permit to close a street and sell hot dogs. When the permit expired at midnight, Stoll had a few more dogs to sell, so he kept going. He hadn't got that hustle, eat, sleep, repeat tattoo for nothing. However, police officers were ready to open the road back up to normal traffic. They let Stoll know that it was time to pack up and go home, but Stoll was still hustling, and when the officers insisted, Stoll threw a hot dog at them, striking one of the officers' uniform. And at that point, one of the officers mustered up the courage to arrest him for assault. I wonder if they run they ran his buns right in. Uh, that happened in jail. Yes. After they gave him a good grilling about the activities in question. And uh, I hope that they finished all the paperwork because if they didn't, they're going to have to catch up. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much what's going to happen. Now, they're charging him with a felony, right? Uh, let me see here. Um, I, they'll, I think... always go for the, they'll always go for the maximum punishment, and then they'll end up... Um... And they'll yeah. end up negotiating it down in court. Yeah, it's a minimum of three years if convicted, but, I mean, are they really going to push this yeah <laughs> that far uh, for a you hot imagine dog. being that guy in prison what, what are you in there for <laughs> i threw a hot dog at a cop <laughs> dude's gonna be damn. a legend <laughs> damn that's hardcore <laughs> he will always be the dude who beaned a cop with a hot dog <laughs> and spent the night in the drunk tank <laughs> that's what should have happened <laughs> it's really all that should have happened yeah you know it's charging him with crazy shit like you're obviously inebriated so we're taking you in to the drunk tank yeah okay like I told Blake, the most he's probably going to get out of this is some community service, a fine, a harsh talking to by the judge. But well, at least disturbing ever, the peace. <laughs> yeah. You know, disturbing the peace. Yeah. Don't don't He'll send this guy up the river. Don't be a bunch of sauerkrauts. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so he'll he'll be um this foot this man will go down in your book of just magnificent to moments. I mean, it's it's just, it is what it is. I mean, there's some yeah. goofy stuff out there because the first person I ever had to ever pull over and apprehend was a pimp. <laughs> nice. Of course. I mean, he was cool. He was really cool. Step out of the vehicle. He smelled, he reeked of skunk weed and the girl, the two, three girls he had in the car were just something else. And then when his vehicle was turned off, I heard a gurgle in the back of the trunk of his car. Oh, no. Still trying to choke back all of the uh, night's work. Oh, no, 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 no. He, uh, I says, why don't you open up your trunk for me? And he goes, oh, there's nothing back there. That was just a gas tank. I'm like, <laughs> sure. Nah. Oh. Sure. I pop, pop it open, and he's got a shake and bake in the back. What the fuck is a shake and bake? He was cooking meth in the trunk of his car. I had your goddamn <laughs> mind! That's how you blow yourself up and die. He was a mobile bomb. We had to call bomb disposal in. Wow. To get the, wow. The, Cooking meth in the trunk of his car. Yeah, there's two types of meth. Let's just narrow it down. There's okay. two flavors of meth. Chocolate and vanilla. Vanilla is the good cartel meth. Chocolate is the ghetto meth. It's brown or it's orange. Cartel meth is going to be semi-clear to white. I, I I don't really need to know these. That sounds so racist. <laughs> you know, the good stuff is the white stuff. You want the, the white stuff. stuff. You, want. you don't want the brown stuff. You get the white stuff in the white neighborhood. The brown stuff will fuck you up. All I right, mean, the, the big the white ladies go more, for the brown stuff the all the time. Breaking bad quality <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> lesser, okay? <laughs> Either way, the story is always the same. Meth and dicks. That's, that's it. Meth and that's dicks. That's it. Meth and dicks. Meth and you dicks. You don't know me. Meth and dicks. <laughs> Say no more. That's all I need to know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, uh, that was a hell of a night because it turned from a simple simple stop to say, hey, you know, your taillight's out to uh, you're rolling with a fucking bomb in the back of your trunk. <laughs> you, you know you're going downtown for this, right? Uh, <laughs> a hallucinogenic-inducing, uh. teeth-rotting bomb. Fantastic. No, no. When I was in uh, New York State in the middle of red trash land, every now and again on the news, you would see a trailer explode oh somebody cooking meth in their trailer They're cooking something <laughs> they weren't vent- they weren't ventilating and somebody must have lit a bowl up and guess the fumes just are so reactive boom that- 
Yeah. So, I, I mean, oh, well. I had to go through a whole drug course from fentanyl to meth to weed. And fentanyl being the most dangerous. Oh, that's all chill. Because it was actually yeah. developed as a rhinoceros tranquilizer. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, my, my opinion on fentanyl is this. Um, when somebody has enough fentanyl rammed up their keister to kill everyone in a whole state... Or the country. That's an in, that, that is a nuclear, biological, or chemical weapon. I didn't know weapon. this story. So somebody had a shitload of fentanyl shoved in their prison pocket, right? <laughs> prison <Okay>. pocket. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking the question. I mean, I haven't seen the source material. <laughs> <laughs> that is, oh, yeah. This uh, is why we. Uh, this is why we drink on this show, ladies and germs. I'm just saying. I mean, I now that I'm out, I saved some evidence photos of the amount of shit I would catch on people. Uh, I think the most needles I took off of a subject was a prostitute. She had 50 needles on her. Mm. What? Yeah, because there was the uh, syringe exchange downtown, and so instead of fighting, you know, you know, at least. Doing something to develop a treatment program against heroin, meth, they would give them clean needles. So they're fostering this downward spiral of bad behavior. And I found 50 wow. needles on her. Mm. Yeah, I mean, syringe needles. These would come in packs of 10 yeah. that the syringe exchange would give these addicts. I just, uh, it, 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 I'm, I'm at a loss. I, it's our I'm, tax dollars. Yeah, we can't possibly afford four billion dollars to build a wall to secure our borders and sovereignty in this country, but we can afford forty billion to Ukraine, and we can furnish people with clean needles and crack pipes. We're Correct. up to fifty-eight billion in Ukraine, by the way. That's yeah. Fuck it's, sakes! It's, it's going to be like eighty here by the end of the month. It's like puking on a pile of shit. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you'd like to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, consider making a donation on Locals, Patreon, or Subscribestar.